unexplained noises and poltergeist activity await the most haunted team at the Greengate Brewery. Hello and welcome to Most Haunted. This week, I have brought you to a place that has seen its share of change and hauntings. The activity here is not only constant, but current. Poltergeists, phantoms and footsteps have all been witnessed. And with that in mind, we just had to come and investigate the Green Gate Brewery. In 1828, a successful cotton manufacturer by the name of John Lees bought the Greengate House premises in Middleton, Manchester and set up a brewery. Although new to this line of work, John Lees succeeded in creating a thriving family business. In 1876, ale production was so good that a new brew house had to be built to cope with demand. Two years later, the founder's sole surviving grandson, John Willie Lees, took the helm and the brewery became J.W. Lees and Company. The brewery has managed to change with the times and remains a successful, independent company. The brewery has a high level of reported paranormal activity and of special interest to the Most Haunted team is that so much of it is recent. It's so refreshing to find a place that is not shrouded in mystery and murders and death. It's just an ordinary place of work. It's been here for over 175 years there are cottages that are much, much older, going back certainly to the 17th century. Because it's been inhabited for so many hundreds of years, we've got folks that lived and died in the cottages. I think there's every possibility that they, for some reason, still haunt the place. And then we've also got the ghosts of ordinary working people in the brew house across the road. And it's, it's quite different from that point of view. It's refreshing. As well as poltergeist activity and heavy footsteps, a figure wearing a long white coat has been seen walking across this floor many times. But when challenged, the figure simply vanishes. We've got an area just above the fermenting room in the brewery where there's just an open space and um, most people who work in the brewery have heard these footsteps from one time or another and they're not like, it can be steam, steam hammer or something like that, but it's not, it's actual footsteps walking across the floor and the, the positive footsteps, you know, you can actually hear them going probably, what, 12, 14 steps and we've been up to investigate and there's been no one around, which you wouldn't expect to find anyone around because there shouldn't be anyone there. The strangest thing I ever saw, I was working in the fermenting room and I needed to go and see who I thought was the head brewer at the time uh, in his office because I'd seen him walk across the room and go into, the, into this office which was only one way in and one way out. I got into the office and there was no one there, completely unexplained. I haven't got a clue who that person was. A tall, dark, cloaked figure has been seen moving slowly between the filing shelves. So horrific is this image that many people refuse to come up to the attic on their own. Every so often we have to move the files from our office up into the roof, which is horrendous because there was about 50 files to move, so I was up and down all morning. And I just got a feeling that somebody had walked in and I was just waiting for them to appear, which is very unusual because nobody really goes up there. And as I looked between the second shelves, there was just a shadow coming towards me. And I don't know what I thought it was at first. Um, I just carried on looking, but it just went sideways into the stacking system, which there was no gaps in the, sh the shelving system at all. So it just went through my lever arch files. But it was only afterwards talking to somebody else and describing it, and they said, well, yeah, that's what we saw. I was like, right, right. But they didn't see it in the roof, so it must have been just having a wander about when it spotted me.
The ghost of a lady has been seen sitting on the opposite side of this table. Also, a night watchman was hit across the face by unseen hands as he walked past this door, and since then, he's refused to come back. The amazing thing about this 175 years, there's very little talk of, of death and, and destruction, if you like, but when they were sinking a well underneath the brew house, there are stories that quite a few of the workmen were killed, possibly by falling masonry or possibly even falling down. But there is a definite fact that one man went missing for two or three days and they found him curled up at the bottom of the well, dead. The well is now covered up, unfortunately, under the sampling room. It would be very interesting for us to do a vigil in the area where that well is, just to see if any spirits come out. Objects have been seen flying across this room and also the feeling of impending doom has been experienced by many staff members. So is this place haunted? We have 24 hours to find out. Now, Phil, we're in the boardroom. A lot of paranormal things supposedly have, have happened here. What do you think about them? Do you think they're real or do you think it's in people's imaginations? Uh, it, that's always a difficult question to answer. Um, it could be even a bit of both. But what I find most interesting is the fact that the woman that's been seen here is sat facing what looks like a cupboard here now. Now, I went outside to check for a chimney and there is indeed a chimney there. So at one point there was a fireplace here, so I think she's seen facing the fireplace. Now, what about the security guard? I mean, that, to me, sounds really quite frightening. Well, I find that very interesting. Of course, the security guard was hit in the face in the corridor outside. Now, we don't know what his physical condition was prior to this happening. You know, was he tired? Was he emotional? Um, and we'll never really know because we can't trace the guy to talk to. And what about the general feel of the place? So many people here, so many staff members have seen lots of different things. Um, how do you think that we're going to react tonight? Well, of course, what we have to remember is this is a brand new experience for the crew here. As far as I know, nobody's done an investigation in a brewery before. So we have new smells to get used to, new noises. We have uh, the tank room, which has been the subject of poltergeist activity. We have the fermenting room. And I think later on, we're going to find it very, very scary indeed when it gets dark. This was the first time we had ever conducted an investigation in a brewery. The atmosphere was certainly different from anything we had experienced before. Some members of the crew were feeling apprehensive about the night ahead, but once medium Derek Okora had arrived on location, we were feeling confident and we're ready to start exploring the Green Gate Brewery. What's the matter? Um, there's total in this atmosphere here, in this energy here. There's a, a poor energy, a poor feeling, a not nice feeling. A person, a person? Okay. Oh, sadness. And also despair. Sadness and despair. And, um, thrown down. Thrown down. Okay. I'm very aware of a falling. I seem to go down. I go down into like, it's like a well or a, it's a vat. Mm. Down, bang. Damage to my head. But there's also a cross here. The spirit man is active here. Is he grounded? Yes. He was, he was murdered. He was murdered, mm -hmm. his life taken away from him here. And um, there's a sp strong... What's that, Sam? I've just had something placed around my neck. Circular. The man's physical body was put down there. There's under this floor here. Mm. It's like... But it has liquid water. And I feel he was murdered, his life taken from him before he went down. He, he, he's done something to the person who took his life 
and I feel this person whose life he took, he knew something and he shut him up. He shut him up. The only way he could do that was by taking his life. You were describing he something. something here. What, what was it's that? Like, it's as if I was, had something on my chest and it wasn't emblazoned there, but it was like a weight and it seemed to have um, a crest or something. I don't know if it's like a medallion or so. And it's like as if... I like a necklace, big necklace yes. type thing. Right, okay. And it's like as if... I feel that this person who took the life of this man wore this. Are you having a laugh? What would that be? What would that be? Did you hear it? Come on! Come on! Down here? It was like so bang, bang, bang. Was it bang. there or was it down there? I'm not sure. It probably was, was down it? there. Was it? Did you hear it, Tom? Yeah, I heard it, yeah. Did we get it? Hey? Are you sure? It was, it was five bangs on One, a... One, two, three, bum, four, bum, five. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, five of them. The tapping we all heard had been very distinct. Would we be able to locate the source of this mysterious phenomenon? very distinct banging noises from another part of the brewery. These noises were frightening as there was no logical explanation for the activity. I felt as if it came from this end of it. And it was like so, so, whew, so strong. Five raps, bang, 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 bang. There's no one down here in ourselves. That was amazing. Yeah. We were all up those stairs, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. That was weird. Yes. Wow. For listening to us. That was amazing, that. For listening to us. I think one was that... listening. So what was that? There's another one. What was that? That door? sounded like a door. That was a bang upstairs, wasn't it? Yeah. Which way? No, There's I nothing it was that up way. There. There's nothing there. No, I checked it. Is there anybody else in the building? No, there's an, an night watchman. Who he, he's got his own place, I think he's got his own room. Yes. Away from here. Yeah. Was that door oh. then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was it. Does that yeah. sound like it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But I thought the. It's going to be in here. Shut up. It's in here. What? What did you say? I just thought I came, when I came here, I thought. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go now. Was that yeah. you? Richard. It's not that. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was duller. Yeah. You just heard a what? I thought, I heard, yeah, I thought, uh, mm. I like something shuffling, but it was right in front of me. Let's go back in there, let's go back in there. That was me. OK. Do you think it's that's, that's, I'm here, I'm here, attention, attention? Yes, absolutely. You know, whether it's one individual or two, um, you know, they're indicating that they want to, you know, draw attention to themselves, so... That's good. It's good. It's a good sign, a good sign for us to um, get more evidence. OK, we're entering a, a different energy level again here. It's like... Without a doubt, there would be energy here, up and down, in this area here, mm -hmm. of a spirit person, if not spirit persons at times, and sounds and audibles here. Um, but I feel as if, as we're drawing closer up this way, I feel as if, uh, I just feel as if, uh, you know, as if, the only way I can put it is if I've, like, I've come to the end of things, I've just, like... Given up? Yeah. But not purposely. It's, it's not a purpose feeling, but I feel in this area of a person's um, the futile feelings just before he's leaving his physical body. And the only way I can describe it is if I'm drawn to the liquid again. And 
I feel as if I've... And it's like as if I'm in, I'm in the liquid, I can't get out of it. And, like, as if I've lost my life. Can you just ask Sam... Okay. ..who this person was that, that was murdered? This is a different person. Oh, it's a different it's person? It's a different soul. It's not the same energy of what I was experiencing before. Is this water? You're saying liquid, you're not saying water. I would say that it was, um liquor. Well, oh, he's fallen into a big vat. Yes. Do you know when this would have happened, when he would have died here? That could have been... Thank you, Sam. That could have been the uh, one, the eight... 18 something, I feel. Mm. 18... I'm not sure if that's eight six or 18... Eight, eight, it's in between those times, okay. I feel. And it, I get, it's, it sounds like rich, rich. It's either Richards or Richard. So it's either name. a first name or a surname? Yes, it's one of the two. Right. Uh, connected with this um, So. With all the lights turned off in the brewery, we headed to the boardroom where many staff members have reported seeing the ghostly image of a woman sitting in one of the chairs. Even more disturbing is the security man's account of being hit across the face by unseen hands in this part of the building. Who are the spirits that seem to linger in this boardroom? We hope Derek would have the answers. What is coming in here is the energies again coming into this room of this person with this emblem. Mm -hmm who would come in here as well, in the spirit body. You mentioned an emblem. Sorry, Derek, just interrupt you. It's, you it's an a emblem. symbol or an emblem. It's like... And like, I should um, have it up here to my chest. Right, like a, a position of high office or yes, something like that. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Right. Authoritative. Yeah. He wouldn't thank you to try and even check his authority. Mm. Um, a person that could be quite gruff in his approach within his life anyway. Right. Um, Lacking in tolerance, um, uh, and feel as if um, I feel an unfair streak running through the soul, mm. a very unfair streak. Um, a person that um, I would say carried more secrets, more secrets to his persona than what was you know, you know the outside world seeing about him. Right. And that's the same guy that committed the murder. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And um, he walks here especially. He's around here a lot. He really is. So he gets around quite a bit, this spirit. He does. He moves about, uh, yeah. Phil. Yeah. There's nothing that keeps him from moving if he, to the different sections. He does move. Can Sam try and give it the name for this person? Because you brought him up quite a lot. Yes. You see, this is not Sam giving it to me. This because you've inquired. Um, now, I don't know if this is like surname or the first name, OK? Mm -hmm. um, I feel that could be the initial, the J, would be for uh, John, and I, I would also get the T that would um, go to, I feel, Thomas. Now, I don't know whether they're connected or whether it's the same person. Mm. OK. OK? Um, well, I'll tell you this a little, a little bit about this character. This character, OK, I firmly believe that he's been listening to these conversations um, and he... Um, He's got a, a, a skulky, sneaky um, type of persona, and he would he wouldn't go over to the, over the top to um, how can I put this to make his presence felt. What year would would Gosh. he have been around? I don't know why, but the figures well the figures are given us mm. here between the eighteen. Go on. 1822, 1827. But for some reason, I stop at 1827 and it seems to stop there. So that must be a significance to it. Maybe when he died? Possibly. Okay. Go on. Oh, I am establishing this facially, um, which would be very profound. This male, okay, had very, very high cheekbones mm -hmm. and also the nose was very, very. I'll say towards the end anyway, bulbous. Oh, mm. right. Okay, and I seem to have round my shoulders um, some kind of um, brownish, greyish mm. um, cape. Mm. 
to my shoulders, which I know this man mm. would have. Um, Is that where the chain's attached that you're talking I about? I feel so, yes. Right. And um, I'm also, for some reason, it's just come to me now, just quickly, as if I've got some kind of, not strong, but mild facial scar. He's getting closer. I feel his, his energy. I, I know he is close. I know, I know we're being listened into. Is he the one responsible for moving things in this room? Yes, he is. Right, OK. Yes, he is. Right. Just try something. and Just one of the... Put all these glasses on the table, if that's all right. With so much activity reported in this room, we decided to conduct a seance using an upturned glass. Can you see the glass on the table? Will you try and move it? If there were any spirits in the room, hopefully they would try and communicate by moving the glass. Try and move it to the centre of the table. After 30 minutes of waiting and with no results, we decided to leave the room but to keep the glass on the table, lock the door and return later when hopefully something could have happened. The brewery was turning into a very interesting place to investigate. Little did I know, I was about to have the most terrifying experience to date and one that I will never forget. Whilst Carl, Stuart, John and myself headed for the barrel room, Kath and Suzanne went up into the highest part of the building, the brewing room, and already they were terrified. Oh. It's horrible up here. You, you are touching me, aren't you? No, I'm not touching You're you. You're touching me back, aren't you? No, I'm not touching you back. Now I am, but I wasn't just then. Why did you just feel something on your back? Yeah. Do you know? Every time I come in these locations, I try my hardest. And, you know, to try and at least... Shh! <gasps> what the was that? Kath, Kath, Kath. Kath, I didn't like that. Did you hear that? It sounded like a footstep right yeah. next to me. <laughs> try and at least... Shh! <gasps> at least... Shh! <gasps> I, I swear to God, I heard a footstep just over to the right there, did you? Oh. Did you hear it? Yeah. Oh, this is horrible. It's very oh. echoey down here, isn't it? So yes. even the slightest... Mm -hmm. I heard something from behind me. Behind you? Yep. But... It's going to look... Oh, what's that? Right. Yeah, I know, oh, it's OK, it's a reflection. Yeah. It is pitch black, isn't it? Yeah, you see... I... I thought I heard a spatter. I thought I heard, um, it may have been water. It may have been water, but it was, um, it may have been nothing. Maybe in my mind. Well, no, I heard something, but I don't, I think it could be explained as water dripping, maybe. Yeah, but this, I came in here earlier, mm. and, um, when we first heard the sound, mm -hmm. and I definitely, I heard something that sounded like a, <sighs> Which was here. Yeah. But again, it could have been anything. Could have been gas escaping from one of these barrels or something. Oh, I, do you know what? I've not moved out of one area. We haven't walked anywhere. She's so had my legs are killing. My legs are hurting. I'm, I'm scared to death. Should we have a walk round? Where? I don't know. You try and get a close-up of What's us two, smell? while I get up in in front of you. Oh, my God! What was that, Kath? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what are these noises? It's horrible. They sound like footsteps, Kath, or... Did you hear that? Did you hear it? Yes, yes. I wasn't just squealing for no. it because I'm a wuss. Did you... Oh. I don't like it. We've not even moved. We just went to turn round and we couldn't even go any further. There's noises. Why don't two of us, how about this, why don't two of us stay here at this end of the basement and two of us go to the, where the poltergeist activity is at the other end? OK. For 15, 20 minutes and then we meet again. OK. 
Right, who wants to go where? I'm not forced, I'll do whatever. I'm not going. Stu, you and me up there? Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. okay. Maybe you stay here, yeah? Okay. It's a horrible place, isn't it? What's them noises? I don't know whether I can carry on because I'm just stood here like a lemon. <gasps> Did you hear a click? Yeah. No, that was just it a little click, wasn't it? We've just split up into two groups. Carnivet are on their own back there. And me and John are actually going down there now. And it's kind of eerie down this end of the cellar. Um, as you can hear a tapping sound in the distance. So that's quite frightening as well now. We're going to go down there, it's pitch black. The other thing we've got is the night vision cameras and a small torch. This is pretty scary actually because you've got a corridor right in here. Yeah. You've got a little light and you can see the outlines of barrels. Yeah, well we'll go down and have a look and see what happens. Is there anyone here in this room with us? Who wants to show themselves to us? Is there anybody here? Can you hear my voice? You want to communicate with us? Please try and move something. Try and make a noise. Anything at all, please. Please show yourself if you're up here in the upper parts of the brewery with Kath and I scaring the life out of us. This is where the noise is coming from, the tapping sound. Well, just so you know, back home. That's what's making the noise. It's very quiet, isn't it? Hmm. Do you want to get the bee cakes on? No, no, what did that. I, how can I do it on my own I know, I know, I know. Oh, my God. OK, 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 I'm freaked out now. Don't be freaked out, don't be freaked out. If something's moved, move it. Carry on, move something now for us. Please, move something now. Susan, I know I'm a mad ass, but what do you think? Oh, my God, I can... I think we're going to have to carry on for a bit longer. Susan, I can hear me people moving. I'm so scared. See, something could have dropped off of one of those pipes. I don't think logically. Stuart and I walkie talkie. Have you got a walkie talkie? Yeah. Well, good. No, 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 that's something dropped. That's something dropped. Something has dropped, sweetheart. Something has dropped. Stuart, can you hear me? Well, I'm not scared. Not normally. I'm scared normally when these things happen. Stuart, Stuart, can you hear me, please? This is weird because uh, we're in where all the vats are at the bottom of the vats, and there's lots of um, there's that sound you can hear in the background is I think gas escaping. Mm -hmm. um, What's that? What, what's that? Somebody's talking to you. Oh, it's a light. Somebody talking? Somebody's pressing a button. Oh, it's horrible up here, isn't it? No one can hear me, no one can hear me. I'm calling me. Has Stuart got a walkie-talkie? I don't know who's got one, hon. Okay. 
just, you know what, you know what frightens me more than anything is the thought of them the trying to hit you, you know, like get out or leave. No, or they're not, they're just hits. They wouldn't, it's too far away from us. It, it was, if, if there was a ghost trying to hit us, that's a pretty poorly aimed ghost. I was truly terrified. The noises we'd heard had been loud. Was it supernatural or had something fallen from the ceiling? It didn't make a difference. I was incredibly scared. Come on. You know, I'm going to go back down there. No, I'm not going back down no, there. I'm going back down there. Come on, get a cup of tea. I had had enough, but Carl went Stuart. back on his own to find out what had happened to Stuart and John, as no one had heard from them, and we were getting worried. Stu? John? Guys? Guys? It wasn't long before John and Stuart returned safely with little to report, but as far as Stuart was concerned, he had no idea what the rest of the night had in store for him. <gasps> Who's that? Greengate Brewery was a totally new experience for me. I can honestly say I have never been so scared in my life. I felt as if someone was trying to hit us with stones, as if they wanted us to leave. While they got their wish, I would not be returning. Derek, Tom, Phil and Richard had headed for the filing room, where a dark figure has been reported being seen. I had suggested that guest medium David Wells should join them, as it would be interesting to see if he could communicate with the same spirits as Derek. Right now, whilst we're standing here, uh, gentlemen, I know that we've got um, the energy of a spirit male. He's very close. So, let's see what he's going to do. This level. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm getting the name Thomas as well. Yes. Yeah. There's a bit of opening down there. What do you reckon we. Yes, let's go further on. Mm. That's the name that was coming through earlier on, David. Thomas. Yeah. yeah. I can sense some here. Yes. It's really cold here. And mm. I know you're hiding. He seems to be pulling, pulling away. Himself, yeah. He's pulling away from us. Almost like a frightened child, and he's he's making me feel very emotional, mm -hmm. very almost tearful. Yeah. In fact, I can I can literally feel tears coming into my eyes now, and it feels. He he of all of them, I think he's trying to tell me he's he's of the loneliest. Mm -hmm. He he seems really desperately lonely, and I think there's a sense of disfigurement. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form, and of his body mm -hmm. when he was alive, and he's he, the only, I think maybe the word I'm looking for is shame. There's like a shameful feeling about him. Mm -hmm. Should you just touch? No, no. no we, were, yeah. we were all up here. Okay. Okay, so it, again in the same yeah, area. Same area. Just tapped me on the back. It does seem to be something about this this, this spot, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know? I think he may have had a 
a desk here. His energy is very strong for all that. I'm yes. Yeah, yes. Is, isn't it? Yeah. Shall we head off to the boardroom? Yeah, mm -hmm. have you ever shared? Mm -hmm. Thomas, yeah. we're going to leave you now, unless you want to make some contact with us now. This is your last chance. What the bloody hell? Hold on. This... I had my back not anywhere near that. Jesus. And you just seen that, yes. OK? I felt to the, my left shoulder just a passing, and then it was like a sound, and then this. Was that leaning up? No, it wasn't, because I, I had my hand on that earlier. I was drawn, when I was drawn to this area, Oops. because of these books and to that cabinet, and it was definitely absolutely upright when I, I touched it and walked away. OK. Hey. He's in contact with us now. This is your last Derek time. was certain he hadn't knocked the cupboard. Could a loose floorboard have caused it what to move? bloody hell? This is your last chance. Or was it the spirit of Thomas trying to communicate with the group? No other activity occurred, so they decided to move to the boardroom. This... Got it? ..is the key to the boardroom and it's been locked. The group were disappointed to see that the glass, which was left as a trigger object, hadn't moved. Is there anybody active in this room at the moment, Derek or David? I know we're being listened to. I've, I've been aware of that all the time, but I'm not... There's no individual, as far as was I can um, see at the moment or hear, actually either walking around this room or is totally present here yet. No, I agree with you. There's nothing... There's no one being that I can sense here. Mm -hmm. Although this room itself yeah. is very powerful. Oh, it is. Yeah. Despite the presence of two mediums, no contact was made with Thomas or any of the other supposed spirits that are rumoured to haunt the boardroom. Stuart decided to conduct a solo vigil in the barrel room, but was he alone? Are you here? Are you a nasty spirit or are you a good spirit? I trust you to be a nice spirit. I don't wish you any harm. I'm your friend, and I hope you're my friend. What the f is that? This is going to be the longest 30 minutes of my entire life. I can't, I can't stay in the darkness like this. I need to know I can see something. This is the only thing that's going to get me through the 30 minutes, knowing I've got a flashlight and I can see something. Otherwise, I'm going to panic. I'm not claustrophobic in any way, shape or form, and I'm not scared of the dark. But one thing I am scared of is ghosts and poltergeists. And I'm sure you lot at home are too. Are you here? Would you like to communicate with me? Would you like to show yourself? Is there anybody there? I can hear something splashing in the puddle. I'm sorry, I don't think I can go any longer. <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> Can you hear that? Can you hear that? The barrels are rolling. Can you hear that? That's what they heard earlier on. Is there anybody down there? Something's there, something's there. Oh, no! Can you see that? Hello? Oh, my God. 
Is there anyone there? Hello? I'm going to radio back to control. I'm taking this well. I'm going, to, I'm going to speak to Yvette. I'm going to see if there's any members of the crew missing. Hello, Yvette, can you hear me over here, Stuart? Hello, is there anyone there? Over. After receiving Stuart's distress call, the rest of the crew converged on the barrel room. No one else had been in the vicinity when he had witnessed the barrel rolling of its own accord. Everyone had their own theory as to what had caused it. Luckily, we had an expert witness on hand. I don't know how a barrel would roll on its own. It, it is on an incline down there. It's specifically made for barrels to roll down. But they don't roll on their own. They need a push. Is there anyone there? To the best of David's knowledge, the barrel run had also been totally empty at the start of the night. So was this evidence of paranormal activity? It was certainly not the only strange event to occur during this terrifying night. There had been lots of audible activity during both the vigils and Derek's walk around. Crew members had witnessed the movement of objects and, for some of us, the tense atmosphere itself had been too much to bear. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. I want to go now. There's nothing there. Oh, please. I knew when we arrived this morning that um, it was going to be good because it was different and it just had the right feel about it. But I didn't think it was going to be as good as it has been because we've had so many things happen to us, so many things crack off. And I don't think that any vigil has actually gone out without something unexplained happening on each one. It was definitely a first for me. Um, I've never been to a place so unusual to do an investigation. A brewery is uh, not one of the first places you'd think of for, for doing a paranormal investigation at. And to me, yeah, it was a bit unusual, but I was looking forward to it. I didn't know what to expect. The highlight of the whole event for me has got to be what happened in the attic, not knowing what's on the other side of the shelves, knowing that there was a figure with a brown cloak and a brown hood that's been seen up there. Derek picking up on it, and then just before we left, wow, that, that glass case that, that was rocked at the back of Derek. And I mean, there is absolutely, in my opinion, no possibility that anybody did that. It was pure, unadulterated, paranormal activity at its best. During the walk around, uh, not an awful lot happened until approximately halfway through the lit walk around. Are you having a laugh? When we were ascending the upper levels of the brewery, um, that's when we heard the keg noises. I can only describe it as two metal kegs, uh, beer kegs, being banged together um, in quick succession five times. Bang, bang, was it bang. in there or was it down there? Personally, I would like to think it was paranormal activity um, purely due to the fact that we know nobody was around. We know where all the crew are, we know where the on-site staff are, so I can categorically say nobody was around to cause those noises. During this investigation, all the incidents that happen could be described as physical phenomena. That means they're bangs or objects apparently moving on their own. So let's take these in turn. First of all, quite early in the investigation, the crew hear six loud bangs in succession. What's particularly impressive about this is that all the crew are present and together. So what did cause the bangs, I don't know. Unless you want to make some contact with us now, this is your last chance. When Richard and Derek's group are in the attic, a cupboard appears to move all by itself. Now, the problem with this piece of footage is that the crew are actually very near to the cupboard, and also you can't see all of the cupboard on the clip which means it's very difficult to rule out the possibility that one of them accidentally knocked it. Just a passing. Later on, when Stuart is alone in the barrel room, he too hears a noise which turns out to be a barrel rolling apparently on its own towards him. Again, I don't find that surprising. He, he finds that very frightening. If it was me there, I would be very frightened. The difficulty is knowing exactly what caused that barrel to move. 
Uh, we can't see whether or not someone pushed oh it, my. but as far as we know, there was no one else down there with him. Also, it seems unlikely that the barrel could have simply moved on its own. Now, what's of interest to note is that other people have also reported experiencing this, but as far as I know, this is the first time it's happened when the person's being on their own. Appearances can be deceptive. From the outside, the Greengate Brewery had seemed like an ordinary building. But as the shadows of darkness closed in, we experienced what had to be one of the most terrifying nights of our lives. Until the next time, sleep tight.